pork loin, and baby potatoes, all rubbed in a garlic, butter, and Italian herb seasoning that we're gonna make right here. Then we're gonna cook it in the Ninja Foodie XL Pro air frying oven all at the same time. And like I said, pork loin, I've even got a video I'm gonna drop in that kind of just explains the differences between a pork loin and a tenderloin. I, I know for years I didn't know the difference, but I got a video where I went to the store. I'm gonna show you the differences. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's uh, get this started. Okay, so I'm about to explain everything I can ahead of time because I'm gonna do a lot of it off camera. When I come back, a lot of it will be done. This is how the oven will be set up during a cook. I've got this air frying basket on level three. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to cut this roast down to fit, would say an inch or so on either side for clearance. And uh, then I will, by the way, I'll weigh that so, so you'll have an idea of, you know, what we're working with because I'm going to use a thermometer and maybe you can kind of go by the times it takes for the weight. This right now is 10.29 pounds, but I'm going to cut off a lot of it. So I'll weigh it and let you know that. I'm going to put the potatoes, and all I'm going to do is put enough potatoes in here to see what fits well, and then I will get all of that, the potatoes and everything, rubbed with the garlic spread. And by the way, here are the potatoes I'm using. It is Melissa's Baby Dutch Yellow Potatoes. I love them. I already know I love those. I've never tried these, so tonight... I'm trying Potato Inspirations, and they are what they call an American medley, and uh, they're just different colors. So I'm hoping they work out, because I think that'll work well with a lot of recipes. But the thing I'm putting on, on everything here is uh, I'm going to make up my own mixture, kind of. It's better than bouillon's roasted garlic. Well, they have, a, they have some directions on the back for a garlic cheese bread that I've already used, and I'm telling you, I love it. Uh, I'm going to change that right there a little bit, and I'll tell you when I get done because I'm going to use the uh, this Italian herbs and, of course, this butter, and I'm going to make up enough to where I can rub what's left of the roast, what I cut it down to, and rub these potatoes and get all that started. But the roast will be up here dripping down on those potatoes during the cook, and I think that'll help. Now, they have a method right here, but theirs is a little different than I wanted to do. But I'll put it there, and you can see it, but one thing, they call for a three to four pound pork tenderloin. Well, I've never, you know, maybe they're common, but I've never seen a four pound tenderloin, not a pork tenderloin, I just haven't, but maybe they're out there. But you can freeze frame that and go by their method, which is totally different than what I'm doing. But I think using this air frying rack will let it uh, kind of brown all the way around, it'll kind of help it. And then I'm also going to drop in that video where I was at Publix and show you the difference between a pork loin and a tenderloin. And I, I think it's a big deal. I, I didn't know for years either. I mean, it's, it, there, there's a difference. So anyhow, I'm going to do that right here. So here comes that video. When you come back, some of this is going to be done. See you on a minute. Okay, I'm going to try and describe the differences in a pork loin and a tenderloin because a lot of people get it wrong. This big old thing right here, is a whole pork loin that you can do a lot of things with like that you can make pork chops out of it but this is a tenderloin and you can see it's a lot smaller in diameter it's usually difference in price that's $6.99 where this is only $3.99 and I mean they come in a lot of different ways you can see right here uh, tenderloin this is a tenderloin uh, I think there's some more here and by the way now some of these look like tenderloins I don't believe they are like this if you look at how it's worded it's a tender pork roast, a tender pork roast, and it's, I think it's just a small loin like we're cooking today. But these that say tenderloin, that is an actual tenderloin. I just wanted to clear that up because there's a lot of confusion involved with it. But anyhow, now you know. Okay, here's one more example of a, a, a whole boneless loin that, like we're cooking tonight. And then here is a tenderloin, or two of them actually, but you can see the differences. They're, they're not even close in size, or and the price is a little different, but you can see that one's labeled tenderloin, that one's labeled pork loin. Now you know. Okay, so my method I'm going to use, I got it on my sheet pan so then those juices won't run everywhere when I cut them. I'm going to place my air frying basket about right there, about an inch off the edge. And I'm going to guess that right there at that black mark 
which will be right there, and that is where I'm going to cut it, just like this. And, and you can see the juices are running, so <laughs> there's what we're cooking tonight. I'll be back. All right, right here's what we're starting out with. It is a six pound, 1.1 ounce roast. So just over six pounds. You could just get a six pound roast and have almost identical to what I have. Here's what we're gonna rub it with. And that is two sticks of butter. And I'm using the sea salted pasture raised Vital or Vital Farms. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's 85% butter fat. It's one of the only ones I use. I do love it. I use it all the time. I'm also using in here, I have uh, in that same mixture, I have uh, one and a half tablespoons of this right here, the better than bouillon garlic base, and two teaspoons of this right here, which is the Italian herbs stir and paste. Now, I do like that, and it stays in the refrigerator and real handy to use. I like it. The potatoes is probably about, uh, I'm going to say that's two and a half pounds because both these bags would have been three pounds. And I've got that right there is all I have left. And I don't know how I'm going to keep up with which ones are which, but because uh, I'm going to put all these in a bowl and coat them with that, and I'm going to rub this roast down with that also. But, okay, we are ready to start this cook. I've put the probe in, and I've got it dead center this way and that way. The tip should be sitting about right there, so that'll be perfect, although I will be backing up my temps and check, double-checking them with my thermopan. Now, I put the potatoes in this bowl, and then I just put this butter mix, butter garlic mixture on them and rolled them around and got them coated real well. I left the, uh, I took, while this was still on the sheet pan, the roast, I did the same thing. I coated all sides, rolled it around, and got it good and coated, brought it out, put the probe in. I did grind a little bit of black pepper on the potatoes and on the roast. So, we are ready. The potatoes I have set on rack level number one. I'm going to put the roast on rack number three. I'm going to close it up, turn it on. Now, before you plug this in or before you start messing with your presets, you have to just, you know, determine which function you're going to use. I'm going to use air roast. Probably not a good reason. It's, you know, but mainly because if you select two right now, it wants you to put your food on one and four. I got a feeling that don't mean anything, <laughs> but because I don't want to, I don't want to worry about it. I'm going to go down to select air roast, and I don't think anything's different. But when you select number two right there, or two level cooking there, you get rack levels one and three, which is what I'm using, and I, I don't think it means anything. But that is what I'm doing. I'm going to plug the thermometer in, and now. We don't worry about time. We do worry about temp. I'm going to cook it at 350 degrees. I'll get it set to there. And now the function, once I press preset, you use the function to change to whatever protein or meat you have. So we're going to pork. All right, now the USDA and the FDA have recently, or a while back, moved the safe temp for pork to 145. Well, I'm not going to lie, you could probably leave it on 140 and it'd be fine, but it might be a little pink in the middle, and people around here are a little edgy about it. So, this goes up in 10 degree increments. You can't change that, that I know how, so I'm going to take it to 150. And that is what I'm going to let the oven shut off at, and then we'll pull it out and see what it goes to. But anything below, you know, if, if, if the pork hit 165, it's fine, but if you get up around 180, 190, it does dry out. So... I think we're ready to go. Everything's here set up. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and hit start. I believe everything's good. We're off and running. I'm going to hit start right here. So you'll have an idea in case you don't have this model with this right here. The uh, other ovens without the probe or the DT201 as most people know it as is identical. It cooks the same. It does everything the same. If you set the temps up to 350 degrees, you should with a six pound roast, get something similar to what I'll get in time. But you do still need to check it with thermopin. But I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see how this is doing. Okay, so for the record, at about 34 minutes, I just checked those potatoes. And I would like for you to see what's going on. I mean, that, that pork is dripping on them and it looks excellent. But those potatoes are done. 
So what I'm going to do is remove that pan and replace it with this one. And then I'll, I'll take, I'll put those potatoes in that right there and cover them with some aluminum foil so they'll stay warm. No doubt in my mind, they'll, they won't have a problem staying warm. We're only right at 69 degrees in the roast. And like I said, 34 minutes. So I'm going to get that done. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'll leave you running right there. All I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to open it up, pull those potatoes out, and keep that roast from dripping all over the bottom of the oven. I'm going to swap it with this. Just like that. And, well, we'll get this closed back. We're going to go back to cooking. But let's see if I can do this with that camera where it is. They look excellent. Now, hindsight... I probably would have waited uh, at least, well, say, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes into the cook and added the potatoes. They did get done a little faster than I thought, but you, you can see, I've already checked them, but you can see for yourself, they're perfect. I mean perfect, 202. That's what I look for. In a, and if you've watched my videos before, you know I like for a potato to get to around somewhere between 200 and 205 degrees. So. I'm gonna get those uh, put up where they can stay warm and now I'll be back. Well, there it goes. <laughs> now it definitely took a little longer than I expected, but here it is. Let's see what it looks like and get it out of there because it has got a little dark. Let's see. Well, no, it looks fine. And uh, I think it will be, uh, oh, I think it's gonna be perfect. We're gonna see, it's 150. The potatoes have been out a little longer than I like. Like I said, I would have rather, or I'd do that different next time by putting them in at probably an hour right now. I'd probably uh, put the potatoes in at, at the one hour mark. And if I do it again, that's what I'll do. Well, I've never cooked a six pound uh, pork loin in an air fryer, so. But it looks good. I think it looks fantastic. And uh, I'll get it a little closer as it comes out. I may leave the probe in where we can kind of see where it goes. But then I'm going to take these potatoes, which are still, you'd be surprised, they're still plenty hot. If you don't put how potatoes are, they're always, they uh, they hold their, their temp. I want to let that sit there a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get this plugged back in so we can watch the temp, or see if I can get the temp back up and uh, let it rest a minute. And I'll be back. Okay, so it's been out resting for about 11 minutes, and I kind of figured out a, a hack or a way around how you can read this probe, and that is to, in other words, it won't show your current temp without hitting start on the oven. So what I did was I plugged it back in, I set up my manual temp to 180, so it's looking for 180 before it turns off, in other words. And then you have to hit start or it won't give you the current temp. So I'm going to hit start and it's going to show us the current temp of that roast. And it is 158. That's the current temp, 158. So it's gained about 8 degrees in, say, 12 minutes. I'm going to turn that back off. But anyhow, I'm about to get those potatoes laid out there, get some pictures made, and uh, we're going to cut it open and see how it looks. I'll be back. Okay, before I pull the probe out, I wanted to show you, I'm going to try and line up right with that tip and give an idea of what that would be. And there it should be pretty close. 160. I am good with that. 159, 160, and that is right in line. In fact, I'm not sure I didn't just touch that probe. So it's accurate. It looks to me it is. So we are good. I'm about to get uh, my stuff done to get my pictures made. Be back. All right, I can only say a lot of things. One, the house smells fantastic. Uh, the potato that I, when I pulled them out earlier, I ate one. It was spot on perfect. I, I love these little potatoes for air frying. You see how fast they get done. Uh, I'm going to cut it and we're going to see what it looks like right here. I think this will make an excellent recipe or an excellent thing to uh, take anywhere, especially Thanksgiving coming up and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving. It can just be this roast for, say, Sunday dinner. But let's see what it looks like right here. 
and uh, that is a, a juicy looking, excellent, uh, excellently done pork pork loin. By the way, a pork loin that looks fantastic, and that garlic. You, of course, you can smell it. It's it's great. Uh, it has a fantastic smell throughout the house, and the potatoes tasted very good. So again, I got to get my pictures made. I want to cut a few slices, and uh, I'll be back. We're gonna do one taste on it. <laughs> be back. All right, I got all my pictures made. I just want to show you when you cut one off right out of the center of this loin, and this is dead center. It's perfect. I mean, it is a good looking piece of pork. I mean, you just don't. It, if you don't cook a pork, piece of pork yourself, it don't always come that way in a restaurant. It's sometimes it's way overcooked, in my opinion, and dry, but uh, it tastes great. I've already ate it several times. It has a great flavor. That, uh, that pork, I mean, that garlic butter rub worked excellent. The potatoes, they are spot on. And you saw how long they sit. Well, they sit like over an hour. But, I mean, you can see right here, they are perfect. And they taste great. So I'm about to uh, get this boxed up for tomorrow. And uh, that'll be breakfast and lunch and dinner and all kinds of things. I love y'all all. all. <clears throat> Come back to see me if you don't mind. As always, hit me with one of these thumbs up and I will appreciate it. Y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.